All right, so I was kind of putting off if I was going to do this today or tomorrow, um, but I decided to get it out of the way before I start having my uh, first meal for the day. Uh, first things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I am the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Projection Screen Paint. Just get some things tidied up around here at the house. Um, today we're going to paint a styrofoam projection screen. I've got my sneakers over here because I didn't prepare for this at all. So we're going to do a styrofoam projection screen using my Sony 720p ultra short throw projector. Now let me come over here first, find my remote control for my projector. Well, first things first, let's get you guys loaded in onto the trod real quick. So I can get some other things done around the house real quick. So let me set you over here. So a lot of people are asking about styrofoam projection screens. And I've explained that you don't want to go with that white styrofoam because it's really brittle. And it will crack if you put pressure on it. Also, too, there's a lot of nooks and crannies in the screen. So it's going to require a lot of painting to get in all those little crevices. So what you want to work with is insulation styrofoam. Now, they do make it 4 by 8 They have it at Home Depot and Lowe's. I've seen it over there. Some of it's purple and some of it's kind of a foam green. Um, what I have here is multiple pieces of the foam green, six of them all together, and it's taped together using all-purpose tape. Now, some people Velcro it to the wall. Um, some people screw it to the wall. It's up to you on how you want to apply it to the wall. And some people just basically uh, tape it to the wall because it's lightweight. There's no weight to it whatsoever. All right, so let me go grab something I can paint in. I'm going to do this right here. In the living room, wearing a shirt. And pretty much, I had somebody comment on fixed frame screens. They were afraid that they would rip the material on a fixed frame screen. There's no way in the world you're going to rip the, your screen on a fixed frame because the material on a fixed frame is designed to expand, especially when you stretch over that spring support system. It's designed to expand. My screen sits right up against a window, and that window generates a ton of heat. So all the heat that comes in from outside hits that glass and heats up my screen. Um, and it doesn't melt or anything like that. But by having that black background, it absorbs a lot of the heat. All right, so... I'm going to grab our styrofoam screen. Make sure I got everything put in here because I got a bad habit of not having anything here. I need it. Now it's still a little under weather today. Just trying to get the rest of the orders out. And I didn't have time to, uh, I didn't think I was going to get to this today, but I want to get it out of the way. A lot of people have been asking questions about styrofoam screens. You know. A lot of people can't build with wood and stuff like that in the home because there might be some restrictions or stuff like that. You never know. So here's our styrofoam screen right here. There we go. All taped together. Right there. It's about as rough as rough as it's going to get. I'm going to try to answer some questions after when I've done all this. But, um, yeah, that's it right there. And like I said, you can go over to Home Depot. Well, I got it upside down. There we go. That's the name of the styrofoam. I got it right there. I'll put all that information in there for you. Where you can get it from. But this is this is several uh, pieces of styrofoam all taped together to make this screen. Now I've already did the other side already, but we're going to. You um, want to see what the other side looks like? This is already painted already. That's the other side. We're going to do the opposite side. I get it set just right without falling over. And get the paint out of the way. So that's the screen already coated with the technology already. But we're going to do the opposite side of that. Again, to do the paint on demonstration for you. So here's the paint right here. Right there. Very easy to get it. Shake it up. Pretty much it. Shake it up, stir it up, however way you want to do it. 
Now, like I say, you can put this on motorized screens, you can put this on fixed screen screens, you can put this on wood, you can put it on cardboard. The object of this technology is allow you, the person who's designing your screen, to be able to think outside the box. That's the whole purpose. So if you're not sure what you want to paint it on, anything, glass. I wouldn't have a glass screen. But still, you can paint it on glass if you want. Plexiglass. There's no priming required. Now, when we first developed this stuff, there was priming required. And I had a customer use a foam roller. I can't express this enough when I say this. Do not use foam rollers with this screen paint because you will mark your screen up. I've said that before many times to any other screen paint. Don't use foam rollers. Foam rollers were designed for painting, for stain. If you're staining the floor, if you're staining furniture, foam rollers are perfect. Paint, no, it's not perfect when using this stuff for here or any other paint. You will mark your screen up because every time you go to set that roller down, you leave an imprint into your screen every time. You don't use foam rollers. In any demonstration, I'll just tell you. Here's my roller right here. I always display my roller to show you what I'm using. Everyday nap paint roller. Every day. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. I had a fellow got on there want to have a long conversation about which nap roller to use. Any nap roller. This is a dollar store. Nat roller, dollar store, in the dollar store. That's it. All right. Take this. I would advise peeling off the tags if I were you. If you got tags on the back of your screen, I would suggest peeling them off, but I don't. So let me get the camera adjusted better so you can see what I'm doing here because right now you're just seeing the top of the screen. And I'm seeing what I want you to see. Let's see what we can do here to make it so you can see what I'm seeing. That's what we want to do. If I can get the trod. Okay, I know what I got to do. I forgot. I got a little system I set up that I do. It works out pretty good. I'll do that instead. All right, I'll do this and see if this should work perfectly fine. Go. There we go. Now you can see the screen. There we go. All right. I'm going to try my best not to nail my projector in the process. Take a little bit of paint and you just run along the side just like this. It's going to take a lot to do it. That's it. Might have been too much, but we'll see. And then you just take your roller and it doesn't make a difference. Some people feel that you got to go on a up and down robot formation. Uh, no, you don't. You can go in any direction you want. It's completely foolproof. There's no way you can mess this up. I can sit here and have a conversation with you right now while this is drying. It still won't mess my screen up. It's designed to be foolproof. You can't mess this up. So if I want, I can just go. <laughs> And then you know you got somebody saying, you know you're not supposed to paint that way. If you paint that way, you're going to leave marks all on the screen. No, you're not. Now for me, personally, my end, I like to get my edges first, especially if I'm doing a bigger screen. That's what I'll do. I'll get my edges first. It's up to you and how you want to paint it. I got Frank Sinatra playing in my head right now. I was listening to Frank Sinatra earlier this morning. That's what I was listening to, a little Frank Sinatra. I like Frank Sinatra. I like that old, the big band music, I like that. That's what I like. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. I'm not much of a singing voice, but I do like some Frank. Yeah. Some music with music, man. Music with music. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to see Frank Sinatra. I'd like to, but yeah, no good chance. Now, all-purpose tape that I'm using right now does have a bit of a kind of a coating to it. 
So that's the only time you might want to paint twice and it has some kind of coating to it. There we go. We'll go once over. That's pretty much just about it. Yeah, not know that. Now I'll probably do a not I don't need to do a full coat, but I might just do a little coat over top of the tape because like I said, the tape is using a form of kind of a little slick kind of surface. And I don't think I might not have to, I don't know. All right, here we go, we're all done. That's it, that's the good thing about it. Don't have to worry about, have to worry about doing too much work. But the tape, as you can see, has little white spots on it. Because that has a little slick coating to it. I'm gonna have to probably do that twice. I'm just going over there with one spot, I'm not painting the whole screen. I'm trying to do all of that work. All right, let me get this up here real quick. My fingerprints are going to never be like that of this, but yes, they do. All right, so keep in mind, the screen is flat. Okay. I've got some interesting comments. Like someone might say, well, something's wrong there. Your screen's hot spotting. It's wet. That's what happens to you. My fingerprints. I got it right along the screen. I was touching it. All right, where's my bag at? I have a bag on here somewhere. There we go, over here. Okay. Now, as the screen starts to dry, it will become lighter. So, hopefully, we can get the screen to dry all at once. Because I have to come back in and do another demonstration. Where is my phone? Okay. Let's see. I'm up on the screen. Everything else. Why is my, what's my phone? Off center. It is off center by a lot. Is that a phone? Did they like that? This? Remember the phone thing. I have to set it right. I think I bumped it a bit. Not sure. But there we go. But as it starts to dry, it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. No, we don't need this like this anymore, do we? It should be standing upright. There you go. We'll grab me a fan. So I don't want this to go off and because it is styrofoam. Let's see what we get away with. Alright, that's not bad. It's not blowing anywhere, so that's good. Screen's a little off angle. A little off angle it is with the projector and whatnot. There we go. I bumped my projector when I was moving back and forth. And as it dries, it gets lighter and lighter. Uh, very easy to paint styrofoam and motorized projection screens and all that other good stuff. You know, stuff you want to paint. It's really easy to do. Um, mesh material. 
um, acoustic screens. Now, if you're going to do acoustic screens, don't use the paint. We have a uh, paint on our website. It's an invisible screen paint. It's very thin. It's designed to be sprayed through a paint spray. I use it for advertising for glass. That is fantastic for acoustics because it's very thin and it won't muffle your screen. If you try to paint regular uh, screen paint on a uh, acoustic screen, that's a bad idea because what you're going to do is you're just going to have little tiny micro holes in your screen. You're going to clog those and it's going to cause your sound to muffle. So what you want to use is you want to use the invisible because the invisible stuff is made like milk. So it's not going to basically clog up those little holes. And uh, let's go take a walk around the screen. So we can see up close. And we'll do the side angle. Right next to the door. My screen is still wet. One of the things people have a gripe with when it comes to ultra short though projectors is the simple fact that their angle gain can turns all black. And the reason why it turns black is because the screen is not designed to pick up an ultra short throw, which means the screen turns jet black. It's called a narrow viewing cone. I do like to do the dry, paint and dry demonstrations. Because then it gives the customer an idea. Now mind, the fan is only set to the first speed. I don't have it all the way up. Most people, when you turn it all the way up, we're talking about 10 to 20 minutes of dry screen. It doesn't take long. 135 inch, which I have there in the living room. I mean, it's in the theater room. It only took about less than 30 minutes to dry that screen. And when you get done, you put paint on your fingers. Just wash it off with some hot water and soap. You get paint on your floor by mistake, you wash it off with hot water and soap. Don't use turpentine. That's going too far. Just use hot water and soap, that's it. Let's see if I got any paint on the floor here. Oh, you did get some paint on the floor. Okay, so I'll show you. I guess you can come with me. All right. So these are my sponges I use for cleaning my floor. It's right here. I do this because you'd be surprised. I'll have people come to go, oh, you use the same sponge for your floor, you use for your dishes. You'd be surprised. And these are the ones for my dishes, okay. A little soap and water in it, that's it. And get your paint on your floor, which I did right here. Get your paint I got on the floor. Take this and that's it. You know the interesting thing about this chemical, this stuff we develop, it comes up so easy. If this stuff lands on your floor, clothes, whatever, well, clothes is another story. I don't get that one, but if it lands on your floor, but if you stick this stuff outside, it can take all the punishments of all the weather, snow, heat, snow, and that screen will not crack or peel. Kind of cool, ain't it? You figure that one out. All right. There we go. Got one right there. There we go. Let's see? Easy to clean off. That's the whole purpose. Not everybody's going to be a professional painter when they paint their screen. People are going to have paint that may splatter on the floor, may splatter someplace, and just take a little cloth and just some soap and just wash it off and you're done. Which I got some on my fingers. You don't want to see me wash my fingers on camera, but it's very easy. Come off your hands. Wash your hands down, you're done, that's it. Do, do, do. That's it. Got to get into my nail still real good, but that's all. A little soap, mild soap, nothing harsh. No turpentines, none of that stuff. Just a little warm water and soap. And this is not even warm, this is cold. Because I had it sitting in my, whatchamacallit, in my sink. And that's it. You're done. So it just gives you the ability to have that OLED black screen. Use it in a fully lit environment and use it with ultra short throw. You don't have to buy a special screen. You can paint it on anything you want. Go over to eBay, buy yourself a $68 cheap motorized projection screen. Buy yourself a cheap fixed frame projection screen. Go down and get yourself a couple of pieces of plywood, paint a tarp, mesh, whatever you can think of. Make that your screen. Even styrofoam, which we have over here, 
One of my Ultra Shirt, those 720p Sony. My neighbors are nice people, but they're quite interesting in their own way. They do are curious about what I do for a living. I don't tell anybody over here what I do for a living at all, period. And the reason why is because I would never have a peace of mind. I wouldn't. Everybody around here has big backyards. And you just imagine if your neighbor had the ability to put up a 180-inch screen in your backyard that was jet black and could look like a plasma TV outside, would you want to basically come over and have a conversation with him too? I don't want to have a conversation. I want to be at peace and quiet. That's where I want to be at. So every once in a while, if I have something laying in the shop that I'm not using anymore, like a motorized screen, I'll give it to them for free. As long as they just don't bother me. And they don't. They're very nice neighbors. They're very nice neighbors. There we go. Alright, we got our screen popping off and drying already. There we go. Nice and dry. Sorry, we don't have sound. It's a little wet right there, as you can see. See how bright the color is? It's not dirty, it's not uh, whatever you want to call it, but it is. You see as it is, colors are bright and vivid. Look at those yellows, look at those blues, look at those greens. Look how the color pops. And as the screen starts to dry, it gets brighter and brighter. tell you this, sometimes I think I couldn't imagine retiring if I get to do this every day I love it fixed frame screens okay got a angry so-and-so there I'm gonna We don't support that projector. We don't support that projector you're, you're naming in the video. We don't support it. I've explained this in perfect example. Perfect example what I've been saying in my videos. And my customers know this. People who do business know this. I do not work with knockoff projectors. We don't trust them. We don't go near them. Due to the fact that their specifications are false. Our screen paint does not work on those projectors at all. I don't care how much money you pay for it. I don't care how many specifications. We don't support it. We have our reasons. Now, Cassie, on the other hand, that's a projector we'll support. But as for the, the um, that 4K laser upgrading, why are you upgrading to that Eczema, Eczema, whatever it is? Don't even bother with that thing. Don't waste your money on that. No, no, no. Don't even upgrade to that projector. Stick to your Casio. I'm telling you, you know, don't, don't take your money. Go ahead and get it. Because in any demonstration, I've seen those projectors. I've never seen them on black diamonds. I've never seen them on any other screens. Don't go near the valve either. Valve is trash. Don't go near it. I'm warning you. Stay away from them knockoff projectors. The valve projector. I did a whole episode on valve projectors. As a matter of fact, go to my Facebook page. I actually talked to the people who own those projectors at their company on their Facebook fan page. And they announced, I have a small little uh, uh, screenshot of us having a conversation. And they announced that projector is native 1080p. If it's that, it's not 4K. It uses 4K pixel shifting. There is no such thing as taking pixels and squeezing them together to make a native 4K. You're missing a bunch of pixels there. If you see what I mean. So unless you got a pixel generator, your projector has the ability to generate pickle, pixel, say pickles, pixels, then you can do that. If there was no such thing as native 4K, I can understand pixel shifting technology, but there is native 4K projector. Why are you spending $3,100 for a projector that can't even produce 4K? And it hasn't used pixel shifting. 
That's a big red flag right there. No, don't don't waste your money on that projector. It's a my projector over there. See that projector over there? That's an Optima GT 5600 native 1080p 20,000 to one contrast at 3600 lumens ultra short throw right there. And my screen right there is 135 inches on that projector. I've even done demonstrations at 140 and 150. Is it 140 outside? Now, the only reason why people jump to those projectors is because they claim they can give you that big picture of 150 inches. Okay, so here's the kicker. This is what you got to think about here while the screen is drying in front of you. This is what you got to think about it. Now, if you take a projector, long throw, okay? Let's say a long throw projector, not short throw. Only thing option short throw, you can be closer to the screen. With the long throw projector, the closer you push it to the screen, the tighter the pixels push together, right? Which means the image becomes sharper and it becomes brighter. If you go to pull that projector away, that means the pixels would have to expand and they may deteriorate depending on how much or high, high your, how high your resolution is on your projector, all right? Now, if you have a ultra short throw projector claiming to do a 150 inch screen but it's using pixel shifting technology that means even at 100 inches it's compressing pixels tight enough to give you a somewhat 4k image what would happen if you were to max it out to 150 inches you would put a lot of strain on that pixel shifting technology because somewhere along the line you're going to start seeing some tears wear and tear in those pixels and that image is going to start to deteriorate it's 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 crap it is crap. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You know why it's crap? I get a lot of customers who own those projectors, and the first complaint they have is uh, the, the, the picture, the color doesn't pop, contrast is poor, um, it's not bright enough, the, the screen's fading. It's a lot of problems with those projectors. And I don't know why in the world would you sink that kind of money into a projector that's not even native 4K. It's using pixel shifting. You know how old pixel shifting technology is? Do you remember when the PS2 came out? Well, the PS2 is backwards compatible to the PS1, which means if you took a PS1 game and you stuck it in a PS2, it had a form of pixel shifting technology that would make the images look more sharper and give a more of a more smooth kind of edge to it instead of giving that rough jagged edge that came off on the PS1 when they first came out. Pixel shifting has been around for a very long time, so it's nothing new. That's how old pixel shifting is. I'm a tech kid, a bit of a junkie, gamer, and all that crazy stuff. Yeah, that's my world. So I know about this stuff. You know, if, if you have 4K capability, why not use 4K capability if you have it? Why would you, use, why would you have to use pixel shifting? So save your money, my friend. Save your money. I understand, it's understand, but look, look, here's the thing, here's the thing, you know, I'm using a 720p projector right now, look at the picture quality on 720p, alright, you can get a 1080p projector and your picture quality will look incredible, I did a demonstration outside around 6 o'clock in the evening and it was still dust and it was a lot of light outside and I was showing demonstrations using a 1080p projector, this technology is designed to make 720p look incredible. If it can make a 720p projector look incredible, a 1080p will look fantastic on this. So you really don't have to set up a 4K. That's the whole purpose of be doing these demonstrations in 720p. It's to have my customer saying, well, look, I don't have to spend the money. Oh, at 1080p, yeah, then you're perfect. But if your Casio is at 1080p, stick with your Casio. Stay away from that Valva and that X Zoomy or whatever the heck they call that projector. I don't pronounce it right to begin with. Stay away from those things, man. I really do. Stay away from them. Save your money. Put it towards something else. You know, in this decade in time, a dollar goes, try to stretch a dollar so it goes as long as it can. Stay away from those projectors. So as you can see, the image is getting brighter. The quality is nice. As we want it to. Um, let me see. Um. 
We can turn the fan off. We got about as dry as we're gonna get it. There we go. And there's your styrofoam. Oh, they like ultra short the projector. Look at the white levels. Beautiful. Still got a little wetness to the screen. I told you because of the tape. The tape has that kind of shiny coating to it, so I'm gonna have to go over it twice on the tape. Um, you only need one quart, and one quart will paint up to a screen size of 126, which I found out when I painted my screen outside because my screen on my deck is 126, and I was able to paint that entire screen using a quart. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to tape one of these screens together, like different sheets of the styrofoam, use all-purpose masking tape. Do not use the one with the shiny coat to it because basically you have to paint that twice because of that, that, that uh, surface. Uh, the paint, I'm sorry, I didn't put any information in because I was going to do this demonstration real fast before I ate. Uh, the screen paint, the heck is a container? Oh, okay, over here. All right, here we go. So... Here's the container of the paint right there. So this right here, this is what you want to look for when you go to the website. It is called Supreme Black Ambient Light Projection 12. It is fully weatherproof if you want to take it outside. I've done a couple of live demonstrations gaming on my PS4 outside. And um, it's a design that you can paint it on anything you want. But I want you to concentrate on the contrast because keep in mind the contrast is going to be there. This area right here on the screen right here is wet. So if you've got a dark area there, it's still wet. Any parts of the screen that are still wet will come up dark. But you want to concentrate on the white levels. And that's what you should be looking for when you look at black screens. And like I said, when you paint the screen, any form of cheap nap roller it doesn't make a difference. Go down, go, go on, go on Amazon, buy some cheap rollers. Go on eBay, buy some cheap rollers. Go over to Dollar Tree, one of them, buy some cheap rollers. You don't need to have expensive rollers to paint the screen. Now, see, let me see right here. I'm gonna touch this right. I think this is still, yeah, this is still wet. So I'm gonna show you something real quick. See right here on the screen. See right there. There's just still wet right there. If it's still wet, it's gonna come up dark. As the screen starts to dry, it starts to get brighter. So any area that's still that's wet, it's going to be a little dark. And any area that's still bright, and you still um, oh, I'll just step on real quick. It's still um, it's drying. It's going to be brighter. There you go, styrofoam. So it's kind of got your mind ticking a little bit, thinking like, what can I build with this stuff? It's up to you. Imagine, like I said, keep in mind, imagine. And I've tested myself against higher performance screens. We've done these demonstrations before. Imagine having the ability to have a screen paint. If Black Diamond was a liquid form screen paint, imagine, and it was cheap and affordable, everybody could afford it, not $5,000 or 100 inch. Um, imagine what you'll be able to do. That's the beautiful thing about this. I got so many screens downstairs that I have painted. Should have just sitting down there, period. Okay, so. Let's go with uh, TLC. I'm doing TCL or TCL demos because they're nice and bright. And you have to have white levels because without the white levels, you can't get them bright natural greens. That's what, you, that's what you're looking for. So keep in mind, some areas are going to come up dark because the screen's still a little bit wet. Now, I did the same exact demonstration on the 126 inch screen I have in the back on the deck. Same demonstration. Now, you see how bright the white levels are between the Lamborghinis. No Lamborghinis? No, they are Lamborghinis, yeah. And look at the skin tone on the females. Look at the skin, the whiteness on the girl's hair. This is the stuff you need to be looking at when you're looking at black screen demonstrations. Don't worry about contrast. Screen's going to give contrast regardless. You want to look at white levels, different layers of white levels. White levels means the difference on how bright the colors, how bright the yellows are on the super soaker. This is stuff you need to be zooming in on.
That's why when I see white screens and gray screens, I'm like, I don't want to see bright, beautiful colors on it. I want to see contrast on that screen because I know the screen has the ability to produce white levels. I know it has the ability to produce bright, beautiful, vivid colors. I want to see the contrast. Show me Batman. Show me Underworld. Show me a star field. Show me outer space planetarium. Show me something deep and dark on that screen. So you can show me what makes that technology different from anything on the market. Same thing when you see a black screen, you see me do these live demonstrations, that's what you're looking for. You don't want to see contrast. The screen's going to produce contrast. It's black. You want to see bright, vivid, beautiful colors, skin tones, the whole nine yards. That's what you want to see. Let's go to my favorite one I like to do here, which is, uh, I don't know if we did this one right here, which is okay, because they have this one thing on here with colors of these models that come on there. I like doing that particular one. I like to see the, just that bright skin tone just pop, pop up on the screen. Now, when I made the mention about retiring, because people say, you're going to retire like real soon. Like, no, I'm not going to retire until probably about two years. Maybe a year, maybe two years, I'm going to be retiring. Then again, like I said, it's, it's, it's a coin toss because I, I like what I do. I really do. I do like what I do. I'm supposed to be having dinner right now, and I'm doing this because I like what I do. Dinner can wait. Now, see that dark spot right there you see it on the screen? Before anybody goes, oh, wait a minute. That's preposterous. That's a mark on the screen. No, that's a screen that's it's still wet. Right down that spot, it's still wet. As the screen starts to dry, it gets brighter. As I told you, I told you in the demonstration, we first started. That's my business phone going off upstairs. I'll get to that later on. I don't know any customers come up on that phone. Look at the skin tone. Look how beautiful the skin tone looks. That's what I want you to look at. That's what I want you to see. Oh, get to 12. I have a Casio too. Uh, I'll show you my baby. I told you, I test this stuff on everything. You know what I mean? Majority, most of y'all projectors, I pretty much probably have them, have them already. These are the last of my orders going out right now. There you go. Bam. Casio. That's my Casio 720p laser and lead hybrid projector. That's a laser projector right there. That's my Casio right there. I'm going to test this stuff on everything. Most times, I have some customers have some pretty cool projectors. One projector, that customer had a Panasonic projector. Ooh, that thing was sweet. I was like, how much you pay for that? It was a little pricey, but I'm still getting it. So I usually buy, most of my customers, I buy their same projectors they got. So I can have them ball with them, test them over here, and have some fun with them. Let's get that spot over here. Do it a little better. Three. I don't want to be on three. Because we're still, as you can see, we're still wet right there, but we're drying. So we'll bring it over on, bring it on one. Get that screen to dry a little better over there. Sorry, we don't have any sound. I didn't set up any sound for this projector. So if you placed an order, there's no more waiting time. All our orders are done. I'm so happy about that. All orders are done, so that means you get a tracking number same day. We're good to go. I just got to paint around where that sticky tape is at. Like I said, don't use the all-purpose white um, tape. I'll show you a picture, just don't use that. It was just to tape the screen together, but I'm going to have to put another coating over top that white tape because it has a kind of slick kind of... A surface to it. All right.
I'm doing some deep colors in there for you. Now, you remember that area that was real dark right there? I got the fan sitting right in front of it. It's drying right now, right in front of you. Like I said, again, sorry we don't have any sound with this. Now, I think tomorrow I am going to bring out my, the lowest projector we have here is a thousand lumen Sony. We'll, we'll do some demonstrations on that. We'll do that at probably around 21, 25 feet back. Yeah, 25 feet back. Let's do 25 feet back. Let's do the Sony at 25 feet back. And then we'll also do some other demonstrations. I haven't done some cloth yet. We're going to do some cloth. I'll go, I'll go on Amazon and I'll order um, a, uh, a screen from there. We'll do a cloth screen. And I'll show you how to build a tension frame for that screen. You don't have to buy a tension frame. Tension frames are expensive if you're buying one for a screen that has grommets already built into it. So I'll show you how to build uh, using, uh, you can design, I'm going to build a little small one, but we're going to build a, a small uh, fixed frame screen designed for a projection, or a fixed frame screen designed for a screen with grommets. That's what we're going to build. My phone rings like that every time when I do live demonstrations. Now it's dinner time for me, but I gotta go reheat my food again. Now I'll answer those calls and then go eat. There you go, that's a 720p projector. All right, let's go take a walk around the screen, shall we? All right, come with me. So let's check out the screen's angle gain. Now the screen is practically dry. There we go. Let's go from one end to the next. Over here. There we go, from up and down. Our styrofoam projection screen. There we go. Very easy to do. So $160 for one quart. We'll paint a screen size up to 126 inches, 16 9, 16 10, or 235.1 if your projector has that capability to do 235.1. If you want for something bigger than that, then we have two quarts. They're coming at $187. You paint a screen in size up to 150 inches. Imagine 150 inches. Boom, that'd be nice. My screen's 135 over there. I was meaning for this to be a short video, but you know, I get I want to show you so much from the video. We can move our fan. We're dry on that side. So let's get this out of the way. We're done on this. That's it. We're dry. Go back a little farther. So when you see that skin, the skin tone, I like this video because it shows that nice skin tone up close on her face. 
we got to aerate the top of the screen. It needs to dry a little bit, but it's getting there. See right there, a little spot right there. It needs to got to dry a little more. I'll let that run a little bit on the fan. There you go. Just watch me paint, dry, styrofoam, ultra short ledge, twerk throw, OLED light projection screen. Right in front of you, live. Using a cheap used nat roller. I've had that roller for about four or five days, so I've used it for a few screens. So it's an old roller. Now I'm going to go over it again, not paint the screen, the whole entire screen over again. As I said, the little areas you're seeing right there, that comes from the tape that I used to tape the screen together. Mind you, there's four, four, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six squares of styrofoam in this one screen, all pushed together and taped together. So keep in mind, they're, they're, you know, the screen just coated over paint, just coated over, coated over tape and everything else to make one big screen. But that tape has a kind of like protective seal on top of it. And I have to paint that again. Just little traces here and there. That's all. And paint the whole screen. It's too much work. You better finish painting the screen to begin with. All right. We'll do one more. And after that, I'm going to go get me something to eat because I'm starving. Go check out some colors. Got some nice bright reds. I like too much. Like I said before, I like has a bit of a short in it, so can't have anybody coming and do any repairs. But I am going to actually get some lights on Amazon and light this place up a little better. And go in some yellows. So while you watch that, I'm going to go check on my food and go get my phone from upstairs so I can uh, answer that customer, get them taken care of, and watch some boondocking hunker down. I love that guy. That guy, Steve, on YouTube, oh man, you got to watch his channel, man. He does these hunker down videos where he basically just does stealth camping and all that stuff. I love those videos. I love how these guys go out there and they survive and like zero below weather and they build these makeshift tents and stuff use some tarp and stuff freaking amazing i'm addicted to it. i love it and there's another fellow by the name of golden sean that's another one i watch this guy's actually building a farm man cool stuff man i love that people work with their hands i love it I watch their videos all the time and i have to add dope or nope if you don't watch Dope or Nope, you're missing a lot. I love freaking Dope or Nope. That's another one of my favorite shows. It's just stuff I like to watch. I don't watch a lot of... I watch TV from time to time, movies here and there. You would think the person who makes this stuff would pretty much, you know, would, you know, be a big gigantic movie buff. But I kind of watch regular TV and I do a lot of gaming. Yes, a lot of gaming. That's why I can't wait for the PS5 to come out. Oh, please hurry up. Hurry up. Here we got the purples. Here we go. Got a chance to see all the different colors and everything. Yeah, 
All right. Now, that is, if you're wondering, the projector. That is my Sony. Let me show you that it is a Sony. Right there. Bam, bam, bam. If I can go a little farther in. You know what? Sony. Sony. Uh, ultra short though projector. I got blessed on that one. I'm gonna tell you I got really blessed on that one because sorry about that I got blessed on that projector because I was looking for an ultra short though projector another one Besides the uh, Optima I have in the room over there and I found a merchant who had that projector for 550 in the box And it came with the stand and everything and I was thinking wow That was freaking amazing because usually that stand alone For those ultra short though projectors can cost you a pretty penny but she had it for a really good price. Oh yeah, yeah. For your Casio 3100, yeah, use a 12. I don't know if I said that already. Yeah, use a 12. Yeah, I'm gonna use a 12. I love the 12. I love the 12, love the nine. Don't get me wrong, I love the nine too. Nine's amazing screen paint. But some people don't want a black screen on their wall, they just don't. They don't want a black screen up there. So they go with the nine because the nine has a kind of bronze, bronze kind of, kind of look to it, and it's it's you know some people adapt to that screen a lot better. And on top of that, the nine produces a higher white level. But as you can see with the black technology, it, its white levels are incredible. But that's the whole purpose is just to design a screen paint that everybody can afford. And I think this time around we didn't go with the because when I developed the the twelve. Somebody came out and said, oh, he's going to charge like five or six hundred dollars for it. I'm like, nope, nope, you couldn't be more wrong. We have no intention in charging that much for it. We wanted to make it reasonable so everybody can afford it. And that's why we bought the paint down under two hundred dollars. So, you know, no one can say, you know, you're saving hundreds because there is no hundreds there. It's one hundred and sixty dollars a quart. And keep in mind, we do demonstrations that other people don't do. We don't do those demonstrations, you know. Oh, man, I'm still hungry. I'm so hungry. I gotta go eat. I gotta go eat, but I, I want to go eat, but I want to show you more stuff. You know what I mean? This is crazy. Oh, man. I don't know what they're going to do for sports, man. I was looking forward to some, you know, but hey. Optima, yeah, beautiful projector, DLP display, yeah. All right, you, don't gotta, you don't have to tell me the specifications, man. The fact that you have an Optima is, is, is enough set right there. It's a name brand projector. You know, I got a projector downstairs. It's a Sony 720p projector. So old, it only does 4.3. And I guarantee you on the screen, it'll look incredible. It's it's an old projector. It was manufactured in 1999. And it's so, like I said, it only does 4.3. It doesn't even have 16.9. But because it's name brand, it's going to look incredible on the screen. We'll do that tomorrow. Because I do got to eat. I'll bring up my old Sony. Old, old Sony. So HDMI is on the back of it and the VGAs are black. So it tells you how old this thing is. I got it for 50 bucks. That's why I bought it. Because it was an old projector. I'm going to see if I can find me another $50 sharp projector. Looking for projectors in 1999. So if you're a merchant on eBay and you have a projector that was in 1999 or older, I'm going to buy it from you. Because those are the projectors I usually look for. If I can make that relic look fantastic on this screen, then guess what? The projector you just displayed is going to be a cake wall. It's a 720p Sony. Your projector's way beyond that. What are the colors on that bird? I remember I was watching somebody was showing up the video on a toucan. It's a toucan? Yeah, the birds that, that had the wild sense of humor. And hold on a minute. Someone made a suggestion. What is it like having a toucan? I think the person who actually answered that question put it crystal clear when he said it was like having an 80-year-old that lives for you know, a three-year-old that lives for 80 years. Yeah, it kind of gives you something to think about whether or not that bird might be a proper choice for you. But those who have it, man, an amazing creature. So look at the contrast, which 
is easy because it's a black screen. Yeah, if you go to the website, if you go to the website, you'll see um, you'll see a list of projectors we support. And all you have to do is just look into that list. If your projector's in that list, then we support it. If it's not, we don't support it. Um, some people, it's not their fault that they buy a knockoff projector because they don't know. I've bumped into many customers. Uh, I had a customer I was talking to yesterday. Um, he bought his projector because, you know, they, they get you on that whole 7,000, 5,000, 4K, all this stuff. And then they said the projector's like 150 or 200 bucks. And it's not, it's not anywhere near that. I don't even know how they get away with that on eBay or Amazon. I mean, bottom line, if you're going to cut down on people who are doing false advertisement, that's where you want to start. When you think, you know what I mean, a projector that's the size of a VCR claiming to be 7,000 lumens, you think you might want to start there. But keep in mind, it's all about money and corporate. So, you know, they're getting their money from these people, so they really don't care. You know what I mean? And it's sad because people go on there and they're buying projectors for the first time, and they don't know. You know, some of them don't know. They buy this projector. They don't know. They think it's a good projector. And, you know, the picture quality, of course, looks good to them because they're showing it on a white wall. You know, the majority of these demonstrations are done on YouTube by people who promote these projectors, do them on white walls in dark rooms. Anything's going to show up on a white wall. Heck, I can go and get myself a freaking Disney flashlight and still produce an image on a white wall with a, with a, um, a view slide. Do we? You know what I mean? It, it, you're really not proving what the product does. You know what I mean? Take that projector and stick it outside, see how far it travels. But other than that, they don't know better and they buy these projectors. Now, luckily, the fellow that I was talking to just purchased the projector. He was able to send it back. And I hooked him up with a merchant over on eBay. He got himself a BenQ uh, um, 1080p projector. He got a 1080p BenQ projector at 3,800 lumens. And his price tag was $139. He got a good one. I got a really good one. And you can get 1080p projectors for that low. A lot of people think, oh, no, that's not possible. Oh, yeah, it is possible. I used to do unboxings all the time on eBay. And I'll show you. All right? Some of my toys, right? See this projector right here? This is my favorite one. Well, okay. There's my Sony. That's my second Sony VPL FH30. I own two of those. That's the second one over there sitting in there. I got that one for three hundred dollars. These things now are running like five and six on eBay right now, but I got it for three hundred dollars. That's a four thousand dollar projector right there, right? This bad boy right here. Oh yes, this baby raised my pride. And just this, everything on this projector is automatic. This is the Panasonic projector. This projector is gorgeous, full 1080p projector, right? The only thing wrong with this projector is when I bought it. The lamp was flickering. It just needed a new lamp. That was it. Replace the lamp. It was cheap. It cost me about 50 bucks to replace the lamp. Other than that, this projector is freaking gorgeous, right? So this is, I think, I get it mixed up. I think it's 1,600 lumens or 1,500 contrasts, either one. But I got this projector for $139. Full 1080p projector. Panasonic. With lens shift capabilities, everything on this projector is fully automatic. Got to get the remote control for it. See this right here? This projector I purchased, I bought it. This is an ultra short throw um, uh, um, Epson Powerlite 585W. I got this with the stand, right? The whole nine yards, brand new, in a box, with the remote control, everything, right? Guess how much I paid for it? $90. That's it. You got to know where to look. The deals are out there. They got them. The deals are out there. That Casio projector, $160. Now, this is the only one I paid money for. This one I paid $1,300 for it because it came on Amazon. No one had to use. I bought it when it first came out. And the Sony projector, I bought that factory refurbished in a box with the stand that came with it and the remote control, everything that came with it in a box for $550. Bucks. That's it. That's the second Sony right there, the second one. These are $4,000 projectors. Now, if you go on, you go on eBay right now, they're asking four, they're asking five to six hundred dollars for them now. That's what their asking price for that projector is now. And that projector is a monster. It's forty-three hundred lumens, nineteen twenty by twelve hundred. 
uh, that projector has something called a twin mode, which means I can show two images at the same time on my screen simultaneously. We're talking about no drag, no distortion of picture, perfect two images side by side. I can watch Netflix on this side, or I can watch my PS4 on this side, or if I decide to get the new Xbox system, the new PS5, I can play them both on the screen at the same time. Freaking love it. Beautiful projector. And there's Sony's. That's a Sony, so Sony's usually cost a bit. And the lamp is not expensive. I just replaced the lamp in the other room for 50 bucks. That's it. That's all. I gotta call that merchant back too. I gotta get two more lamps for backups for these right here. So yeah, you can you could uh you can get good deals on there. You know what I mean? You don't have to get duped in some of these these knockoff projectors that claim to be uh, and they're not what they're supposed to be. But some customers don't know better and they fall into these projectors by accident. And if you call me up and say, hey, Ken, I, got I always ask you what kind of projector you have. And if you got a projector like that, then I'll point you to a merchant to get you a better projector. What's the best ultra short though projector? Well, pretty much all of it works on our screen. It's just those knockoffs don't work. I mean, right now I'm using, the, I like the Optima GT56 and 55. That's what I like those right there. But I kind of got my eye toward getting the P1. And Dell has one. Actually, I want the Dell before I get the P1. I want the Dell. I saw the Dell. I definitely want to get the Dell first. Um, but if you don't want to spend that kind of money, because um, I just want it just basically for testing some stuff. Um, but if you don't want to spend that kind of money, just go with, uh, uh, like I said, one of these projectors right here. Just go with an, um, uh, Sony or, nah, don't. We just had a conversation about that projector. LG. The Valva projectors, stay away from the Valva projector, please stay away from those projectors. They don't work on our screen paint. Don't don't go near that, seriously. I mean, th just don't, just don't. If you're going to buy a Valva projector, literally, just pay Chuck Norris to kick you in the private areas. Cause that's pretty much where you're going with it. Yeah. That projector's garbage. So all you have to do is just, you want to throw your money away and feel some pain at the same time? Yeah, contact Chuck Norris, insult his family, give him the money you're going to pay for the projector, and just have him football kick you in your private areas, because that's pretty much where you're going. That's what you're. That's where you're going. So just just stay away from that projector. Go to the LG. Sometimes the LG projectors lumens are a bit low because they're like 1500. So I would say go with an Optima, an Optima ultra short though projector. Go with one of them. I get one of those. They're cheap now. They're actually a really good price. Um, when I got mine, mine was thirteen hundred dollars. Um, now they're like nine hundred bucks. Wish I would have waited. You know. And keep in mind, when you get the projector, it's going to say, "Well, if you go to AVS Forms, you're going to say, well, the projector only does up to hundred inches. That's a bunch of crap, Ola. Depends on what you're using. Our technology allows you to go up to one thirty-five. Look at my screen. My screen's like one thirty-five in there." Yeah, so I, I actually, when I saw the projector, my screen was 126, and I was actually not going to buy it at first. I was like, okay, this is not going to work. It's only 100 inches. I got to find me a projector that does over 100 inches. And the only ones they kept showing me was the knockoffs. And I wasn't going near that freaking nightmare. Uh oh. No, no, no. No. So you don't want to go near that at all. Trust me, just stay away from those projectors. All right, um, well, let me put something up that we all, let's put some football up, some football highlights. <sighs> I miss football. I miss all sports. I even miss the sports that I didn't even watch. I miss everything, like literally. Like right now, I got a golf course in the back of my house, and that's the closest I will ever come to any kind of sports right now. That's it. That's pretty much it. Got you kind of thinking, trying to figure out like what sport doesn't have contact. It's got to be a sport out there that doesn't have contact. I'm telling you, it's going to get to a point they're going to start making up sports like extreme kites flying. You know, it's going to come up next. Extreme kite flying. Well, other people do kite flying. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to knock on that. Extreme sneaker tying.
All right, I put this on, and then after that, I'm going to get out of. All right, I am going to uh, be with this video right here. Um, I'm going to pretty much uh, be on tomorrow. Um, we'll break out the old projector, the really, really old, old, old projector. I got downstairs to 1999. Yeah, it's expensive, ain't it? I mean, it's freaking expensive. Like, good crazy expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. It's an expensive projector. I've seen worse than that. I've seen way worse than that. I mean, it's not ultra short throw, but JVC has an 8K projector, and I think that thing's around like fifty or sixty thousand dollars. God, 8K. When are you gonna run off 8K? Really, seriously, what content do you have in your house that's 8K? It's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Like I said, the P1, uh, it's worth it. You know what I mean? It's definitely worth it, but. Some of these projectors and JVC keep it. Think of mine. Okay, okay, put it quick. JVC has a 16K. There's a 16K projector. But you got to think about it. The console systems that are supposed to be coming out now are, yeah, search a review on that. Check out um, uh, AVS Forms and also to check out Projector Central. I and mean, go on YouTube, but YouTube's got a bunch of reviews on the projector. But um, a, um, JVC has a 16K. I've seen that thing right there. That thing is humongous. That's a big refrigerator. That's like, and let's say, it's, it literally is a refrigerator. It's kind of like having, a, would you have someone mound a refrigerator over top of your head? There you go. That's a huge freaking projector. That's a mad projector. Massive. But I wonder how much a lamp would cost in that thing. I'm going to look it up and find out how much a lamp would cost for one of those projectors. But yeah, that projector is freaking huge, man. But 8K? What are you going to run that's 8K? Like, seriously. Like, the PS4, I mean, technically, when they come out, they, they went, okay, so the Xbox when it came was claiming to be 4K, but it wasn't 4K. It was using compressed 4K. It was using, base. that's all it was using. It wasn't real native 4K. So these systems that are coming out, hopefully, they are native 4K, right? So finally, you have a console system that can match your 4K TV, 4K projector, whatever it may be, blah, 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 whatever floats your boat, right? But if you get an 8K projector, what the freak are you running off of it? Like, seriously. You'll never use that. Not in, not in this era. You'll never use 8K. I got 8K TVs. What are you running off of it? I don't know. Anything on Netflix that runs in 8K. I don't see any special edition section. And Netflix, it says especially for 4 They have a 4K, but not especially for 8K. What are you going to run? Seriously. It's an option you will never freaking use. Unless you got, I, I don't even know. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to have to research that. What the freak do they run and format for 8K? Yeah, yeah. yeah some of this stuff, I think some of this technology is just too ahead of itself. Uh, that's, the, that's where you got me at, buddy. Um, sound systems and all that stuff, not my field. I'm not even in, in that area. I know some stuff, but I'm not in that field like that. Now, I have a friend of mine who I have a contract through my company. That's what he does for a living. He sets up professional sound systems for churches, events, concerts, and all that. I'm going to have him put my system in for me because this guy basically works in that field. And yeah, he's going to put in a monster system, which it's not going to be for this house. Actually, I'm in the process, as I said before, on buying a house. And I'm looking at somewhere around uh, maybe 7,000, 8,000 square feet for a house. It's going to be big. So, you know, I'm dying in this house. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Do it right. I'm going to die in this house anyway. So, yeah, and it's got four acres on it. So I'm going to build me a monster system, man. I won't disturb any neighbors. I can build me the screen of my dreams, which I've never had a 300 or 400 inch screen, which I won't want. But not for sound systems, not good. I'm doing some research right now. Like he already knows what to put in, but I'm doing my own form of research so I can teach myself on outdoor home theater setups, like speakers and stuff, everything that's weatherproof. Because I have a system for out here. It's nice. You know what I mean? It's not anything big or expensive, but it sounds nice and all. But Every time I set it up, I got to take it all apart and bring it in the house, and it's a pain in the neck. So I was telling him, look, when I get to this other house, I'm going to be spending money for these projectors and speakers and stuff. And I don't want to be out there freaking trying to disconnect all this stuff every time it snows. So he's going to order outer boxes for my projectors, and uh, he's going to be building a special casing that goes outside to 
that comes up from the patio, rises from the patio and comes up. It's going to have all my amps and everything installed in it. He's why he's doing all the whole job for me. But this guy, that's what he does, like an audio tech or something. That's what he's into. I want a light show too. It would be kind of nice. Not something of my neighbor saying, what are you doing over there? Not that kind of light show. But okay. All right. So uh, with that being said, let me check out everything else you want to check out on here. Did we not? Um, I'll be back on tomorrow and we'll do some demonstrations with the cheap projector. We'll get the crappy projector from out the back. Cheap, cheap, cheap projector. Try finding that projector. That projector is really freaking old. Hmm. Still here, just checking on something. That's all. Just looking for a few things on here. I know it's supposed to be eaten by now, ain't I? Just can't stop showing you guys stuff. I just want you to see the stuff that I see every day. I uh, don't know it offhand, but I will put it in the comment section for you. I'll put it in the description of the projector I'm using. To see the black levels, 100% contrast. And I don't think the contrast on this projector is all that great. I don't know what it is, but it's not all that great. But with this technology, it looks incredible. Man, it's a big dog. Where I live at, these people walk their dogs up the side of the hill, um, right near the, uh, uh, the uh, golf course. And man, it's got, I think it's got King Corsa. Yeah, that's the couple. There's a couple that comes up. They walk their big dogs all the time. You have two rock, a rock waller. You have King Corsa. Yep, that's what they got. But I can't have the dogs I want here. So I have to wait till I get my four acres because I'm planning to get a few. I'm planning to get a British Bulldog, which I'm going to call Mr. Franco. I plan to get two Newfoundlands. Uh, one St. Bernard. I like big dogs. And I'm going to get a couple of smart dogs, small dogs. Um, I do want to get a chocolate lab because my sister has a white pit bull and it's gorgeous. It has blue eyes. I want to mate that with the chocolate lab. And um, what else? There's another dog I want to get to some smaller dogs, a couple of furry chihuahuas. I love dogs. I do. And a couple of cats. I'm going to get a few cats too, a few Persians. And, um, I thought about getting a bird, but when I found out a bird lives 80 years, <laughs> I was like, bird's going to outlive me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretty much probably not get the bird. But I do want a couple of, a couple of animals. So keep in mind, if you have a good, a nice house, I know I've done the research on these dogs. I, used, I grew up on a farm, so farm-like, somewhat farm-like, and I've had just about every, we're a family, family, big family of 10, we've had about just about every dog you could possibly think of. My mother was an animal lover, so we had a lot of dogs, and I know when it comes to big dogs, they're big, they take a lot of space, and they are destructive, and they will slobber on just about everything and anything you have in your house, so I know that. I, it's a race, I had a couple of Raleigh's and Rockwallers and uh, a few pit bulls, and I had some really big dogs, you know, so... Um, I had a great Dane. Good God, man. We great Dane. His name was Klepto. Because Klepto would come in there and take your cell phone, wallets, anything you would leave on top of the table. Klepto would take it and bury it in the backyard. That's how he got the name Klepto. You leave your phone, it's gone. Klepto got it. When Klepto passed away years ago. Yeah, many, many years ago. But what I'm going to do is with that four acres, I'm going to build me another house out there. Not a big house, but a good sized house for the dogs. You know, something that they could be there and they'll have an acre to themselves. So I got it all set up when I'm working on for them. And then that'll keep, and then once all this is assembled and everything's done, I guess I'll give you guys a tour so you can see it. Uh, 
people say, are you selling that much paint, Mr. Bird? No, I'm not selling that much paint. I got a lawsuit coming up pretty soon. People got me sick in the last house. And you know, y'all, you heard the story already. Last house almost killed me. Nearly almost killed me. That black mold is no joke. It's no freaking joke. And they almost killed me. So, long story short, damage to my lungs, uh, medication every day, inhaler, two different forms of inhaler, and that will be pretty much what I have for the rest of my life. So, it's long term permanent damage, no operation. The good thing about it is I didn't get a collapsed lung and I didn't get cancer. So, you know, God was good. You know, it was very good. So, could have ended up much, much worse. Much, much worse, but it didn't. So, real estate investment group. I think about it every day. Freaking real estate investment group. You had the money to fix it, and you did. And then people say, well, would you rather take your health or the money? I take my health any day. Any day, I take my health. Any day. Okie dokie. Let me get get something to eat because I'm hungry. I got to pull myself away from the camera, but I want to show you so much more. Oh, so much more I want to show you. But I have to go eat. All right. Um, I think I'm going to start signing off by saying think outside the box because, you know, you got the product to be able, and it's cheap, it's affordable, it's ultra short, though compatible, it's weatherproof, you take it outside, and you can turn anything you want into a screen, even a bed sheet, and I've done that too. I've actually built the screen and used a bed sheet for blackout cloth. Yep, $9.44 Walmart bed sheet. All right, people, this is the part where I'm going to sign off. I wish you all a happy and blessed day, blessed night, depending on where you're at in the world. Please be safe out there. Please be safe. Um, I'll see you all tomorrow when I bring out the old Sony from downstairs, the retro Sony. I'm going to see if I can go online and find me an older projector than that. But other than that, just be safe out there. And uh, uh, we've got all, everybody's received tracking numbers. Everybody got their tracking numbers. They're all good to go. Um, tomorrow we'll drop off the last and we're done. Uh, anybody places orders for today or tomorrow or the day, you'll have tracking numbers same day because now we don't have any backup orders. All we have is new orders to take care of now. We have enough supplies downstairs, containers, everything, so there's no excuses. Everything is done. We have it here so we can get you guys taken care of. So enjoy and keep on the bright, keep on the other side too. You don't have to spend a lot of money for a projector. Go eBay, get yourself a nice projector. Don't spend a lot of money. You know what I mean? And then you still can have a fantastic looking screen without basically spending an arm and a leg. Because we all got to save money in this decade in time, don't we not? All right, got to go. Thank you all. God bless.